This, so this is average power. <coughs> we never really derived the equation. I put it down, I showed you it last time, but I never derived it. Average power. The definition of average power, it's one over T. the integral of instantaneous power. So we, we use the letter capital P. It's 1 over T, the integral over a full period, T0, T0 plus T, of instantaneous power. That's the definition of average power. as definition of any average. The mean, the average. Now, if I have a, a cosine or a sine function here, and you attach it to a circuit, I don't really care what the circuit looks like. And there is a load here Z load. What's going to happen to that resistor or the impedance at the end? It doesn't have to be a resistor, it could be an inductor, capacitor, combination of it. That voltage here across the load is going to have some maximum value called V max. It could be more than one, could be less than one, it depends on what we have. But it will have the same W there, but a different phase shift. I'm going to use theta or phi, whatever. Theta. And if to find the current, we can use Ohm's law. When you divide by this, the current, so this is the voltage here, and this is the current. The current as a function of time will be some maximum value, cosine the same W, but probably different phase shift. That's what's going to happen. Because you take this value divided by ZL. W doesn't change. The only thing that's going to change is that angle. If this actually happens to be a resistor, these two will be the same. Theta and phi will be exactly the same if it's purely resistive. But if there's a capacitor inductors in that, it's not the same. That means my average power, or my instantaneous power, net average, instantaneous, is going to be V max cosine WT plus theta times I sub max cosine WT plus phi. I'm going to try to simplify that and I go, oh boy, when I looked at it, like this is not pretty. Now let's see, I can rewrite that V max I sub max times cosine WT plus theta times cosine WT plus V. Now to get the average power, we're going to integrate. Well, there's no way mathematically you and I can integrate this, cosine, cosine times, because you can't combine them into one. It's not the same thing. Theta and phi are different. If they were the same, oh, that's cosine squared, I can use that identity we just looked at in the previous video, in the RMS video. But those two are not the same. So I have to look somewhere else. And the only place I can see, let me write color identities, let me know. Cosine alpha plus beta. What is that equal to? That's cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. Right? And what's cosine alpha minus beta? Isn't that cosine alpha, cosine beta, plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. You 
These are trig identities. Let's add them. If you add them, you're going to have what? Cosine alpha plus beta plus cosine alpha minus beta equals. When you add, what's going to happen to the sine here? They're going to cancel each other out. So you're going to have what? 2 times cosine alpha cosine beta. We'll divide each one of them by 2. Now I know what cosine alpha cosine beta is equal to, and I can use that right here. See that? Cosine alpha cosine beta, when you have multiplications, that's what I have right here. I can replace that with 1 half cosine alpha plus beta plus cosine alpha minus beta. This is my alpha, and this is my beta. I can use that right here. I can use that identity there. So I can write the power now, PT, instantaneous power. I told you the math is going to be ugly. PT, there's a one half fat, I'll put that in the front. It's V max, I sub max, over two times. Cosine the sum of them. Let's add these two. That would be what? 2WT plus theta plus phi plus, let's do the difference. This will be what? Cosine, when you subtract these guys, is theta minus phi. Now, the average power, definition of average power is 1 over t, the integral over a full period of the instantaneous power. So if I do that, this is a constant I can put in the front. It's V max, I sub max, over. 2t times the integral from t0, t0 plus t, cosine 2wt plus theta plus phi dt plus the integral over a full period of cosine theta minus phi dt. The good news again, this is a zero. You're integrating a cosine function over a full period. There's a full period. And what is the total area? Again, this is a positive area. This is a positive area. This is a negative area. When you add them, they cancel each other out. Anytime you integrate a cosine or a sine over a full period, that goes to a zero, the plus minus area. So now it becomes the average power. And this is a constant. There's no t in it. See that? That's no t in it. So if I factor that, v max, i sub max, cosine, theta minus phi, over 2t times the integral over a full period of dt. Well, when you integrate that, that's just a t.
times t, and t goes from t0 to t0 plus t. Well, if you plug in this in it, you'll have t0 plus t minus t0, which is just a t, the average power is v max i sub max cosine. I call that theta v minus theta i instead of phi. I usually go the theta of the voltage minus the theta of the current. That's why I write all the time. Theta or phi doesn't really matter. But the phase shift of the voltage minus the phase shift of the current divided by 2t times t. And the t's will cancel each other out. And that's the equation that you see in our book. It's 1 half V max I sub max cosine theta of the voltage minus theta of the current or theta minus phi, whatever you want to call it. That is the average power. We're using theta minus phi, which is the same thing. One half V max, I max, cosine theta minus phi. So that's where the equation came from. Now, if you want in terms of RMS value, well, we know for sine cosine function, V RMS equals what? V max over the square root of two, right? We just derived that. And we know I RMS will be the same thing for a sine cosine. It's I sub max over the square root of two. So when you play with these mathematically, V max is going to be the square root of two times V RMS. And I sub max will be the square root of two times I RMS. So this equation is good. Let me just box it here. That's good. You can use it. But now if you replace V max with this and I sub max with that, what is the square root of two times the square root of two? Two. two. So you will have two V RMS, I RMS divided by two times cosine theta V minus theta I. And again, the twos will cancel each other out, and you end up with what? V RMS, I RMS, cosine theta V minus theta I. That is the average power if you are given the RMS value. With RMS value. This is average power. Without the RMS, with the maximum value. You can use either equation. Well, let's look at this, actually. Study that equation in depth a little bit there. What is the average power absorbed by an ideal resistor if you have an ideal resistor for a load there is no difference between theta V and theta I remember pick any value let's say this is R give me a number 40. Give me a value for the voltage. Anything you want it to be. Any angle, anything. 
20 cosine 40t. So when you look at that, what's theta v here? Zero, right? Because there's no shift. So theta v equals zero. Let's find the current. What's the current here? Ohm's law says the voltage divided by the resistor. 20 cosine 40t divided by what? 40? And what do you have? 1 half cosine 40t. What is the phase shift for the current? So theta for the current is also 0. There is no phase shift. That's W. So the average power, it's 1 half V max I sub max times cosine theta V minus theta I. What's the difference in theta V and theta I? Zero. And what's cosine zero? One. So for an average power absorbed by an ideal resistor, that's what the value is. If you want to use Ohm's law, V equals what? I times R. So if you plug it in, you will have what? 1 half I squared maximum times R. If you use I equals V over R, do that substitution, the average power will be what? V maximum squared divided by what? 2R. So we can calculate the average power observed by an ideal resistor using one of these. This is only if you have an ideal resistor. There is no impedance. There is no inductance there. No L in it. No C in it. But what about if you have an inductor or a resistor? So what's the average power absorbed by an inductor or a resistor? Let's look at that too. So let's begin with the inductor. Average power absorbed by an inductor. Again, if you use the same values we did before, but instead of a resistor, let's say we have 40J here. An inductor has a J in it. And let's say this voltage here is 20 cosine 40T. We write that in phasor as 20 angle zero. There is no phase shift. So theta V is zero. That's the phase shift for the voltage. Let's find the current. Ohm's law says current equals what? It's voltage divided by the impedance. The voltage is what? 20 angle zero. This is what? 40J, 40 angle 90. So you have what? 1 half angle negative 90. If you do the math. So what's theta i? Negative 90 degrees. Remember the equation for average power. V average is 1 half 
V max, I sub max, cosine theta V minus theta I. That's the equation. One half V max, I sub max, cosine. What is theta V when you have an inductor? Theta V is zero in this example minus, what's theta I? That becomes a plus 90 degrees. So the difference between theta V and theta I will always be 90 degrees plus 90. What's cosine of 90 degrees? Cosine 90, look at the unit circle. That's a zero. Zero times anything, zero. The average power absorbed by an inductor is a zero, always. What is the average power absorbed by a capacitor then? So the average power absorbed by an inductor is always a zero. Is that a purely inductive? Yes, okay. purely inductive. So if you have a combination, let's say you have your load 40 plus 5J, you break it down to a resistor of 40, an inductor of 5J. The resistor will have that much power absorbed, the inductor will have zero. If you have a capacitor there, <coughs> I'm trying to show you the math, why is it zero, instead of just saying it's zero. For the capacitor, it will also be zero. Again, let's use the same numbers. Now you have a capacitor, except the value for that would be negative 40J, negative for a capacitor. And if this voltage, we said we're gonna use 20 angle zero, that's what we used before, then theta V equals zero. Let's use Ohm's law, I equals the voltage, 20 angle zero divided by the impedance, which is what? Negative 40 J, that's 40 angle negative 90. Because in the example you guys gave me, you said we have, what was it? 20 cosine WT, right? Nobody gives me a phase shift. We could have said plus 30 degrees, it will make a difference. It will not change anything. But the example, I said, give me a number. I think that was 40, I think. You gave me a 40 here, no phase shift. I said, give me a value. You could have put a phase shift, it will not change any of the math. This will be like, for example, 30 degrees and you're gonna find out this one's gonna be 90 degrees off that one. So either way, the difference is gonna be 90 degrees. So here, this will be one half angle 90 degrees. Instead of negative, it will be a plus. So the average power absorbed by a capacitor is equal one half V max, I sub max, cosine theta V. Theta V is zero minus theta I, which is 90. That's a negative 90 degrees. What's the cosine of negative 90? That's also a zero. So what's the average power absorbed by capacitor? Zero. So if you have a capacitor and inductor, the average power taken by them is always a zero. Why? Because there's a phase shift, a difference. This does not have to be zero. It could be any number. It could be 30. If that's 30, this will be 90 degrees more than that. So when you subtract them, the difference is always 90 degrees. And cosine of 90, that's always a zero. Okay, so what happens if your load is not really purely resistive? It's not just a resistor or just an inductor. So here we go. 
Let's take this example. We have a load here. And this load, again, it is 8 minus J11. The fact J is negative, that tells me what? Capacitor. So it's a resistor and a capacitor. When the J is negative, that's a capacitor. When the J is positive, that's an inductor. So you have a resistor and a capacitor for a load. And let's assume we have a current going through that. The current coming in here at 5 angle 20. What is the average power absorbed by the load? We can look at that as a resistor here. The average power by the resistor, that's load, not capacitor, so, plus the average power by the capacitor. The average power absorbed by the resistor, we can use any of the equation, one half I max squared R, since I know what I said max, plus the average power absorbed by capacitor, which is what? Zero. And what is I max? That's a five. And the resistor is what? Eight. So it's one half times 25 times eight, 25, not 24 times 8, which is 100 watts, power watts. You see what happened to 20 degrees here? That comes in theta V minus theta I. There is no phase shift when it's purely resistive. So theta V minus theta I will be a zero. So if you treat that as a resistor and an inductor, so I'm looking at that like this. with the resistor of value of eight and a capacitor here of value of negative 11J. So as the current comes down this way, it's gonna mark this voltage. Notice the voltage cross this, eight times five, which is what? 40 angle what? 20. So notice the phase difference between theta V and theta I is zero. That's why it doesn't come anywhere when you calculate the average power for the resistor. It's one half V max, I max, Theta V minus Theta I. Theta V is zero, or 20. Theta I is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. You go to this one, the voltage is different. When you multiply them out, this is actually the voltage here. Look at that resistor first. That impedance here is 11 angle negative 90. So when you multiply them, five times 11 is actually 55 angle when you multiply in phasor, you add the angle. That's negative 70. So if you had tried to apply that, go, wait a minute, let's apply what we know. The average power by the capacitor is 1 half V max, which is 55, I sub max, which is 5, cosine theta V. Theta V is negative 70 minus theta i, which is 20. What's negative 70 minus 20? Negative 90. What's cosine negative 90? Zero. I don't have to do it, but I know it's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. <coughs> if you look at that resistor. So something like this, we're on a test, we want to do all this out to prove. No, you just do this. No, we know it's going to be that. I'm just trying to show you now. Okay. But I just, I'll go to this one. That was it. One half, and V max here is 40, right? Mm -hmm. I sub max is what? Five, and this will be cosine 20 minus 20, which is zero. What's cosine zero? One. What's one half times 40? 20 times five, 100 times one, that's 100. I'm just showing you, you don't have to, but if you broke it down into this and that, Calculate the voltage through each one and use that equation, one half V max, I sub max, cosine theta V minus theta I, you'll end up with the same answer.
Or if you remember this, that you will have zero, just you don't have to do it. So even when you have other components in the circuit, the power across the capacitor is going to technically be zero? Uh, average power, yes. Average. Yep. Okay. Average power is zero. The instantaneous power is different. For example, the power across the capacitor, if you ask me for the instantaneous power, I said, tell me what time? Uh, PT, it's V times I, right? I'm talking about the capacitor here. The voltage is what? 55 angle negative 70 times what? The current, which is what? 5 angle 20. So now, let's multiply that. 5 times 55, 5 times 5, 25, 5 carry 2, 275, I think. Angle, you add these. What's negative 70 and 20? Negative 50. So the equation for that is 275 cosine WT minus the 50. So if I know what W is, you tell me what the time is, I'll just plug it in. i got to change this to radian because this will be in radian. So I got to convert that to radian, convert that to radian, well this will be in radian, convert that to radian and plug into that equation. And that will give you the instantaneous power at any given time through that capacitor. But make sure you don't mix the units. This will have to be in radian, convert that to radian. This is always in radian, that's in degrees now. This is degrees and this is radian. So you can't really add and subtract, you have to make sure the units are matching first. And that'll give you the instantaneous power at any given time. W is always usually in radians? W is always in radians, yep.